Okay, so in today's video we want to start to look at actually manipulating the matrices. So we're going to be looking today at matrix addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication. Um, I'll talk more about that later on, but scalar multiplication simply means multiplication by a number, um, by a scalar. So not multiplication by a matrix, so not a matrix times a matrix, but a number times a matrix. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start with addition and subtraction. And it's really very straightforward and very intuitive. So the sum of two matrices, um, so actually the first thing is to note that addition and subtraction of matrices is only defined when the matrices are of the same order. They have to be the same size for you to add them together or else um, addition is not possible. Same with subtraction. Um, if they are the same size, then the sum, which is addition, the sum of two matrices is found by adding the corresponding elements. So the number in the top left will add with the number in one matrix will add with the number in the top left in the other matrix to get the number in the top left of the sum matrix. Okay, so that's what it means by corresponding elements, so in the same position. And the difference, which is subtraction of two matrices, is found by subtracting corresponding elements. So it's as simple as that. So we've got two examples here, two by two matrix both all two by two matrices. So we're adding this is uh, two by two plus a two by two, so it's possible. Okay, and then um, and it will produce a two by two, so the dimensions don't change. And then all we're literally doing is adding the elements. So we can have 16 plus negative 12, okay, which is the same as 16 minus 12, which is four. If you need your CAS to help you do 16 plus negative 12, by all means. Um, the top right will be the top right from this matrix plus the top right from this matrix. So negative five plus negative seven, which is negative five minus seven, which is um, negative 12. Sorry, I got a bit cramped in the corner there. Negative 12. Um, bottom left will be bottom left number plus bottom left number. So negative 3 plus 15. That's going to be positive 12. And then bottom right plus bottom right 12 plus 8 is 20. Okay. Simple as that. Part B subtracting the corresponding elements. So again, we've got two by two and two by two, so we're gonna end up with two by two when we subtract them. Um, and then top left minus top left, so four minus 11 is negative seven. Top right minus top right, so negative five minus negative five is negative five plus five, which is zero. Bottom left minus bottom left, minus 13 minus 12 is minus 15 and nine minus minus three, which is nine plus three, 12, okay. Yes, your CAS can do the matrix addition and subtraction, but honestly, by the time you type in those matrices, um, it would have been quicker, even if you need your CAS to help you with the addition, it's quicker to type in the four um, individual additions rather than enter in the matrices. Um, but there's no tricks to it. You simply um, put the matrix in, so it's 16, negative five, negative three, 12 and then add plus another matrix negative 12 sorry 12 uh, negative 7 15 and 8 okay and the same for subtraction you just um, I'll just subtract these two for um, efficiency sake um, you just write a subtraction between them simple as that um, so the box talks a little bit about adding and subtracting. Um, obviously, if you try to add or subtract um, matrices which aren't the same size, you'll get this error message with your CAS, dimension, dimension mismatch, um, which is quite self-explanatory that the dimensions of the two matrices you're trying to add don't match. Okay, multiplication of a matrix by a number, which is called scalar multiplication when we're dealing with matrices. So multiplying by matrix um, is called scalar multiplication because it has the effect of scaling the matrix by that number. Okay, so for example, multiplying, multiplying a matrix by two doubles each element in the matrix, it scales it all up by a factor of two. Um, the product of a number and a matrix is simply found by multiplying each element in the matrix by that number. Okay, so if we're going to have four times this matrix here, we're simply going to multiply every element in the matrix by four. All right, so four times 12 is 48. Four times negative four is negative 16. Four times negative nine is negative 36. Four times six is 24. Four times negative two is negative eight. And four times three is 12. Done, easy as that. 
part B, negative 6 times this matrix. So negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 times 0 is 0. Negative 6 times negative 9 is positive 54. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. Negative 6 times negative 4 is 24. And negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Again, your cows can do that fairly easily. So say, for example, if I was to just take this um, previous answer up here and multiply it by 3, um, that's all you need to do. There's no special tricks um, to doing that. Um, again, if you were, you know, yes, your cows can do this, but by the time you enter in the matrix and then multiply it by 4, for example, thinking about um, example um, 2a, um, it would have been quicker just to do it by hand really, um, but even if you need help with the multiplication, quicker to type in 12 times 4, 12 times, uh, 4 times negative 4, 4 times negative 9, um, rather than actually entering the matrices, um, in my opinion. Okay, example 3 here, we want to find matrix X such that 2A plus X is equal to B. What I would suggest when you have a matrix equation like this, and we'll talk more about matrix equations later on, um, where they get um, quite a lot more complicated than this, I would suggest that the first thing you want to do is solve the matrix equation for x yourself um, before you put the matrices in. Okay? So for example, we have 2a plus x is equal to b. So to get x on its own, we would need to subtract 2a, x is b minus 2a, and then I'll worry about working out what b minus 2a is. So b is 0, negative 4, 1, 3. So do the rearranging first, then put your matrices in. Take away 2 times a, now I'm going to do 2 times a at the same time. So 2 times a, which is this matrix up here, is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10, and 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so that is b, and that is 2a, and now we're going to subtract them. And we get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, negative 4 minus minus 4, so that's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. 1 minus minus 10, so that's 1 plus 10, which is 11. And 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. And so we've solved for x. Scalar multiplication using, using your CAS, as I said, um, very straightforward. You just simply type it in as it, as it looks. Um, it's worth noting, thinking about the second example we just did then, or, well, technically example 3, um, that your CAS cannot solve matrix equations. Okay, so if you wanted to, for example, if we were to, to type in 2 times um, 1, negative 2, negative 5, 3, sorry, that's not 1 minus 2, um, so it's 2a plus x equals 0, negative 4, 1, 3, and tell our CAS to solve that for x, it won't be able to do it. So it can't solve the matrix equations. Um, can't solve an equation with matrices in it. So you need to kind of do the solving um, yourself, so rearranging the equation. And then, um, by all means, if you want your CAS to help you evaluate this, once you've got it, if you want your CAS to help you work out what B minus 2A is, it can do that. But it can't do the rearranging, the solving of the equation for you. Okay. Um, so that's one of the things that we need to, to think a bit about along the way. As I said, we'll deal with some more equations later on where things get a bit more complex. Alright, example four. A car dealership has three new car sales centres where they stock three models each of four-wheel drives and sedans um, represented, as matri um, represented as matrices as follows. The first column Oh, sorry, I can't speak today. The first column represents the four-wheel drives. The second column represents the sedans. Okay, so this is the four-wheel drives and the sedans, and this is the four-wheel drives and the sedans, and this is the four-wheel drives and the sedans. Um, each row represents a different model. Okay, so we've got three different models in each um, sold in each of the centres. If the third row represents the most expensive models. Which center has the greatest number of expensive four-wheel drives? Okay, so these are the most expensive models being sold at all um, three centers. Four-wheel drives are in the first column. And so which center has the greatest number of expensive four-wheel drives? That will be that one there. So center C. They have nine four-wheel drives. No, oh, expensive four-wheel drives. They've got more four-wheel drives than that.
Give the matrix that would represent the total stock of four-wheel drives and sedans for all three centres. Okay, so if we wanted to work out the total number of um, four-wheel drives and sedans for all three centres, um, uh, now actually, um, my apologies here, I think the wording of this question um, is not my orig the original intent of the question. Um, let me maybe add something to it. So if the third, uh, sorry, give the matrix that would represent the total stock of, of each model, let's add that in, of each model of four-wheel drives and sedans for all three centres. So what we simply want to do is add up um, the stock matrices from each centre. Okay, so we're going to do A plus B plus C. So therefore, um, I might not write them all out separately, we'll be here forever. So A plus B plus C. So it's going to be 7 plus 13 plus 14 is 20, 34. So there are 34 of the, let's assume it's if the most expensive is the bottom row, middle pricing, the middle row, cheapest at the top row. So what we've calculated there is the total number of um, the cheapest kind of four-wheel drive. Okay. Then if we would add up the top right, 16 plus 12 plus 7, so that is uh, 28, 35. So there are 35 of the cheapest model of sedan across all three centres. And then we look at um, the middle um, range cars, so 5 plus 8 plus 12, 8 and 12 is 20, so adding another 5 is 25. So 25 mid-range four-wheel drives, and 8 plus 15 is 23, plus 12 is 35. There are 35 mid-range sedans in total across the three centres. Expensive four-wheel drives, 2 plus 3 plus 9, so that's uh, 14 and expensive sedans, 4 plus 1 plus 4, so that is 9. So the total stock of each um, model of four-wheel drive and sedan um, is found by adding together the three matrices. Okay, the wholesale price in dollars of each model of four-wheel drives and sedans is represented in the following matrix. Okay, so we've again got our four-wheel drives and our sedans and then sort of the cheap, mid-range, expensive in our three rows. If the wholesale prices are marked up by 100%, calculate the recommended retail prices. So marked up by 100%, you're increasing the price by 100%, which essentially means that you're doubling the price. Okay. So if we double the price, we want to calculate the recommended retail prices. So these are the wholesale prices. Recommended retail prices are double this. So the retail prices is going to be um, two times that matrix, 20,000, 13,000, 25,000, 18,000, 40,000, 28,000. So doubling those prices gives us 40,000 for the cheapest four wheel drive and 26,000 for the cheapest sedan, 50,000 for the mid range four wheel drive, and 36,000 for the mid-range sedan, 80,000 for the expensive four-wheel drive, and 56,000 for the expensive sedan. Centre B which is, wishes to have a clearance sale. If it discounts all retail prices by 10%, represent the discounted prices as a matrix. Okay, so if we discount by 10%, okay, that means we're going to find 90% of what we have. Okay. So the discount prices are going to be 0.9 times our original prices, times the wholesale prices, our uh, retail prices, sorry. It discounts all the retail prices. So these are our retail prices. So we're going to discount those, 40,000, 50,000, 80,000, 26,000, 36,000, 56,000. Okay, so 90% um, of all of those might get my cast to help me. I could do the six multiplications um, or I could um, enter in the matrix multiplication. So you, you have a play around and decide what's going to be quicker for you. Um, three by two matrix, 40,000, 26,000, oops. 
50,000, 36,000, 80,000, and 56,000. Oh, sorry, I've got to times that by 0.9. Alright, and so we get 36,000, um, 23,400, 45,000, 32,400, 72,000, 50,400. All right, discounted prices. Okay, so exercise 11C today. My apologies. Um, so addition, subtraction, multiplication by a scalar, and also thinking about that in some applied contexts, like this um, final example to do with the cars. Uh, so 11C is the work for today.